Good, mo good morning, everybody. This is John Heerdink at the Tribe Public Network. Uh, I'm based in San Francisco. I wanted to thank all of you for joining today and look forward to having you back for many more webinar events in the future. And uh, hopefully soon we're going to be doing more and more in-person luncheon events across the U.S. like we did in the past uh, across the 32-city network. Uh, today we're welcoming everybody from over 26 countries that have joined the tribe to get in front of companies and uh, leaders of companies on uh, primarily on the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange uh, that, that they are interested in. Through the wish list process, uh, many of you know that every week we invite you to send us the names of companies and uh, leaders of companies that you want to meet through this process. And we thank you for being part of it. And we'll be connecting you again every week on a, a Friday e-newsletter, uh, again, inviting you to do so and then keep you up to date on these companies that you care about. Today, we have uh, two esteemed colleagues, uh, the management from InMed Pharmaceuticals. Uh, our program today is titled Exploring the Neuroprotective Qualities of Rare Cannabinoids. Very interesting subject today, and uh, especially with InMed's uh, recent announcement. Um, we were very excited to have them uh, for this timely event. And note that uh, throughout this event, you're going to be able to send us any additional questions you might have as they as they come up through uh, the Zoom chat feature. We'll do your best, do our best to get it uh, fit into this program, which is estimated to last about 30 minutes. And uh, if we don't get it done, we'll try to get uh, Eric Adams and Eric Sue, uh, who are pictured here as well, uh, that'll be speaking in a few minutes to come back and do so. Uh, maybe Eric, could you just tell them a little bit about yourself before we get started and as people are rolling in and just give them a little bit of background and what um, uh, today, if you don't mind. Why don't we start with Eric Sue? Maybe you could uh, give us some background. Fantastic. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Eric Su. Uh, I uh, is educating Canada. I have a PhD degree from University of Toronto. Um, back then, I was working on virology, so so that's kind of interesting and moving from there to to what we're doing now. Uh, through the process, I was in a gene therapy field for a, a long duration. Uh, about five years ago, I joined InMed. My responsibility in InMed is looking after the the, the develop the process for the cannabinoid and, and the cannabinoid analog synthesis, as well as looking at all these preclinical programs. Great, Thank thanks. Thank uh, yeah, so I'm the other Eric, uh, Eric Adams. I'm the president and CEO of the company. Uh, my background, uh, I'm a chemist uh, by training and uh, early on went over to the dark side, uh, as we say, and, and into the business side of the pharmaceutical industry. And I've come up through business development and sales and marketing uh, along my career, working for both large international pharmaceutical companies as well as small biotech companies. Uh, I've been with InMed now uh, six and a half years uh, as the CEO. Um, and yeah, we're very excited to be here today to talk about uh, one of our new development programs, uh, which is in the neuroprotective space, uh, looking at the impact of rare cannabinoids. Uh, so John, if that's okay, I'll just launch right in and, and we'll get busy on the presentation. Yeah, just one quick uh, format uh, ish, uh, reminder is that uh, as far as the questions coming in, thank you for already sending them in through the Zoom chat feature, and please continue to do so. We're going to hold all the questions right towards uh, the end after Eric and uh, Eric, and Eric uh, uh, present their pre presentation. Again, we're going to try to keep this all in about 30 minutes. If you don't get it, uh, uh, all questions and you want or you think of those afterwards, please feel free to send it to research at tribepublic.com and we'll do our best to follow up and get those questions answered as well or get them back on at some near future. Uh, our website again is www.tribepublic.com. Thanks again. Take it away, Eric. Great. Thank you very much, John. Well, I appreciate everyone uh, participating today and joining us. Uh, we're very excited about this new program that we are uh, going into. And uh, yeah, we'd like to just give you some information and talk about really the role of cannabinoids in the uh, neurodegenerative disease space. We are a publicly traded company. Uh, we are listed on the NASDAQ under the symbol INM. And as such, it's important that people understand that uh, some of what we're saying today uh, uh, constitutes forward-looking statements. 
Um, so uh, you might not be able to read all of this right now, but this will be uh, up on the uh, web if you want to read further. So basically, we are one of the few, few pure play uh, rare cannabinoid companies out there. Um, we, uh, there are other companies that are looking at different aspects of this, but no one really kind of covers the umbrella that includes not only the pharmaceutical drug development side, uh, we'll talk more about that, uh, but the preclinical research, uh, looking at, uh, you know, new areas of application for these and manufacturing. We have extensive manufacturing know-how, uh, under one roof. So, you know, this kind of makes us one of the few companies that are out there who are able to, uh, discover, uh, manufacture and develop. Uh, cannabinoid compounds. Uh, it's a very uh, interesting market opportunity. These are some of the numbers that are put out by uh, different uh, research groups. Um, you can see, I mean, they're, they're big numbers. And I think, you know, really this kind of covers the spectrum of all uses of cannabinoids. But one interesting uh, product that is a pharmaceutical product that's been approved is Epidiolex, which is a CBD oil uh, used in uh, forms of epilepsy. And last year, it was about a 700 a $660 million product uh, developed by a company called GW Pharma that was acquired by Jazz Pharmaceuticals for, I think it was over $7 billion. So it's, it's a very interesting area and we think that the science behind it will help explain why. A little bit on the manufacturing side of things. Um, there's a number of different ways to manufacture pharmaceutical grade and uh, consumer grade uh, compounds. Um, and we have expertise in-house that covers a broad range of these manufacturing know-how, uh, starting with biosynthesis, where we can uh, utilize either some of our patents based on E. coli biosynthesis or yeast biosynthesis, uh, including chemical synthesis, which is uh, also a traditional way to make pharmaceutical compounds, um, and an integrated approach that we've developed called Integrasyn that kind of takes the best of both worlds. Um, and uh, applies those to, to make uh, whatever you know, quality grade of cannabinoid you need. Really the goal here is to come up with a process that is consistent, scalable, reliable, uh, that results in the high, uh, highest purity possible and in a cost-effective uh, matter. So depending on which cannabinoid you're trying to make, uh, to what quality you're trying to make it, whether it's pharmaceutical or for the health and wellness space, the consumer space, um, we have uh, in internal know-how in, uh, in facilitating that kind of manufacturing. Uh, we really want to talk today about the drug development programs. And so uh, we're, what I'd like to do is just kind of give you an overview as to what we're doing right now. And then I'll turn it over to Eric Sue, who can talk specifically about the neurogenitive uh, disease programs. Uh, so we do have a number of programs right now. You can see that we have one compound in phase two human clinical trials. Uh, in a rare genetic skin disorder. Uh, we have a, a product for glaucoma. And then a bit earlier on, we have these uh, neurodegenerative disease uh, and chemical, uh, new chemical entities uh, that are based on cannabinoids. So we wanna just touch briefly on, on these and then Eric can go into a little bit more detail. Uh, the first thing is epidermolysis bullosa. So people who are new to the company, um, uh, you know, this is a very devastating genetic skin disorder that uh, leads to, uh, you know, the, the inability of the uh, dermis and epidermis to, to maintain their integrity. Uh, so it's very easy to cause wounds or to blister in these patients. Uh, this is a genetic condition, so it is a lifelong um, uh, ailment. Uh, and there's currently no real uh, approved therapies directed specifically at this, at this disease. Um, what we're trying to do with uh, our selected cannabinoid, which is uh, cannabinol or CBN, is to address some of the uh, important symptoms uh, associated with disease. So we're not trying to you know, reprogram the genes, which is what you would need to do to basically eradicate the disease. Uh, but it, on a day-to-day -day basis, there's a lot of important uh, symptoms that need to be managed with currently several products. And these include things like wound management and wound healing. Uh, pain, uh, itch, which is a very bad uh, uh, symptom in, in this patient population, as well as uh, chronic inflammation. And so what we're doing is looking at our uh, CBN cream in a cohort of patients uh, who suffer from this disease. Uh, enrollment is ongoing. We anticipate uh, finishing enrollment and treatment by the end of this year um, and with a data readout sometime in the uh, mid to late first quarter of next year. Um, so it's, it's uh, hopefully going to show some benefit. 
uh, a meaningful benefit in, in this patient population who really, you know, is is uh, desperate to have uh, new treatments uh, to help manage the disease. We also have a program based on the same cannabinoid, uh, cannabinol or CBN, uh, in glaucoma. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of products out there that can reduce the interocular pressure, which is associated with this disease. Uh, but there's really kind of two components to this. One is the inter interocular pressure, and that causes then uh, neural damage uh, and leads to blindness. So at the back of the eye, you have these neurons that uh, are responsible for vision. The pressure from from glaucoma can damage those permanently. And what we've seen in our early studies is that um, not only can we reduce interocular pressure, but independent of that, there's another effect that cannabinoids have, and that is they can go to these neural cells and uh, proactively prevent them from cell death. Uh, so it's an it's a independent effect uh, and something that we have patented and we think is a very important approach. Uh, and so we're still in preclinical there, uh, ramping up towards phase one uh, over the next 12 to 18 months. So uh, that's a, a, a very interesting application of cannabinoids. Uh, and it's really kind of that research that's led us uh, to look at other uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So why don't I turn it over to Eric and he can talk about neuroprotection and neurodegenerative diseases. Thanks, Eric. So, so as Eric said, you know, in the glaucoma space, we know there's already a lot of uh, medication out there that can reduce the intraocular pressure. Um, however, the patients in this space, even though they're staying on the IOP reduction drugs, their disease still progresses and eventually lead to blindness. So therefore, what we were looking at when we tried to target and work through the problem associated with this disease is really looking at ways to protect the neuron cells in the back of the eyes. Uh, we set up assay and screen several cannabinoids. We were able to identify CBN as the cannabinoid that can actively protect those neuron cells in the back of the eyes. So with our neurodegenerative diseases, we're taking the same approach as well. So not instead of looking at the insult, which are, are the toxin that is actually uh, causing the disease, we're focusing on how to protect the neurons. Next slide. So we talk about the unmet needs in the neurodegenerative diseases. The other, the other um, problem with this space is really there's not a lot of uh, good treatment for uh, neurodegenerative diseases, um, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson. Uh, traditionally, if you are diagnosed, you put on medications that are addressing the neurotransmitters, the level of neurotransmitters. So inhibitors were used to um, to prevent degradation of these uh, neurotransmitters. However, as the neurons are dying, you're not producing more neurotransmitters. So it's not really addressing the need uh, to stop the disease progression. Uh, in the recent years, uh, pharma company are working on antibodies, so monoclonal antibody that specifically target the factor or the toxins that causes the disease to progress. Um, but this approach um, has met with not a very good success up to this point. Uh, even though there is a recent proof of, of a monoclonal antibody to treat Alzheimer's uh, by Biogen last year. So we can talk a little bit about that later in the Q&A. Um, our solution is a little bit different. We use cannabinoid or cannabinoid analog to, to address uh, these issues. Uh, one of the issue with the monoclonal antibody is it's a large molecule. So it's very hard to distribute through the blood brain barrier to get to the brain. So, but that's not a problem with cannabinoid. It, cannabinoid is, is a class of compound that's known to cross that barrier very easily. Um, and as, as I mentioned before, instead of focusing on the factor that's, that's causing the disease, we focus on protecting those cells. Um, so we screen cannabinoid and analogs that are able to show neuroprotective effects for these affected neurons. And the other thing we found was that the, 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 the cannabinoid we selected actually had the ability to promote or increase neuroid growth and, and potentially enhance the neuronal functions. Next slide. So this space, you know, it's, it, it has a lot of potential. The market size is, is enormous. You can see from the slide that by 2030, just two diseases alone between Alzheimer's and Parkinson, you're looking at 20 billions uh, and up. And there are a lot of 
big pharma that are very active in this space. There's a lot there have various uh, products or potential products that are in the trial right now. So it, it is a is a space that's still growing. Next slide. So why, why cannabinoid? Why are we so interested in using cannabinoid to treat or analog to treat these type of diseases? Um, you know, one thing is I, what I mentioned before, it, but this class of compound can penetrate blood brain barrier very easily. Uh, and the other thing is that there are a lot of receptors through our body, especially in the brain that interact with these class of compounds. And, and through these interaction, it can actually produce different effects, which can modulate the disease progression. So one of the things that we, we are going to address in our uh, disease model is looking at inflammation. Uh, we know that inflammation plays an important part of a disease progression, such as uh, in Alzheimer's. Therefore, we want to also, in a disease model, we want to look at how our cannabinoid analog can actually modulate those inflammations. So next slide. So this is one of the reasons we're very excited about what we're observing for our cannabinoid analog to treat disease such as Alzheimer's. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see these are differential neural cells in culture. So when we expose them to the analogs that we have, which is in the middle part of the panel, what you notice is that there's these extension of these, these neurons, it's kind of like arm, leg, kind of like extend out your arm. And these neurons need these extension to be functioning properly. So on the right panel is actually a, a high magnification of, of these uh, extended neurons. And what you see, what you notice is that they are actually these finger-like structure, like a branching structure. And this, these branching structures are actually needed for the neurons to communicate with each other. So what we think is that not only these analog can protect the neurons through neural protection effect, but also it has the ability to potentially restore the function of these neurons. So we're very excited about this. These are our ongoing study. Uh, we have selected two different, uh, our top analogs are moving forward to our, our study in the, in the disease model. And we're continuing to do these uh, collaboration with University of British Columbia. Next slide. So look, look in the patent space, we're actively trying to protect everything that we learn um, through our research. Uh, we have new chemical entity patents that's in place, which are the core of the protection that protects the compound of, of these analogs uh, and the structure of these analogs. We also have several, up to seven family of manufacturing patents that can cover the process that's needed to manufacture these uh, analog compounds. And finally, we have specific method of use uh, patents families, which addresses the uh, indication that we're going after. So through these three different class of, uh, of patents families or patents, where we will actively try to protect the space or discovery that we found. Thanks, Eric. Great, Bye. thank you, Eric. Um, yeah, just to give an overview of uh, the financials of the company, you can see here, uh, our cash and short term investments, uh, that is our last reported. Uh, we filed our annual financials uh, just on the other, the other day. Um, and uh, we had a couple of big days uh, yesterday and today looks like a decent day in, in, in the market as well. Um, so you know, it's good that people are responding positively to you know the press release we put out uh, on the uh, neurodegenerative diseases. Um, but you know we, we're, we're in, a, in a good position right now um, you know, everyone knows that biotech companies, uh, you know, require a, a lot of cash to keep going. Um, and, you know, we're looking at different ways of accessing uh, capital uh, to continue to development, uh, the development of our different programs. Um, so in the next year, you know, these are some of the key value drivers that we're looking at. Uh, as I mentioned, at the end of the first quarter of next year, uh, the, we should have a readout in the phase two clinical trial that we are uh, completing enrollment in. Uh, we're going to continue to advance the glaucoma program towards human clinical trials. Uh, we have initiated a couple in vivo studies uh, looking at the neurodegenerative disease candidates, which are based on proprietary cannabinoid analogs. Um, and that's going to be a, a continued area of development for our pharmaceutical programs. Um, you know, we'll continue to protect our know-how with uh, patents and, uh, you know, we'll stay opportunistic and open to 
uh, strategic partnership opportunities that allow us to advance our programs. So with that, uh, I will uh, stop there and turn it back over to John. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, very interesting. So just a reminder, uh, Tribe, um, that you can sit, still send in some questions here. We've got a few minutes left here to uh, get a few more questions answered. We got a, uh, thanks for sending in the ones that you've already forwarded. Um, note that if you want to review this power, this, this uh, um, presentation today, the, uh, we will be publishing it sometime later today on the Tribe Public YouTube channel. Uh, and you can view it at your leisure there too. And uh, it seems to have a life of its own after these. I think we're averaging somewhere between 20 and 30,000 views of these videos afterwards. So uh, feel free to go back and review and, and check if you've uh, uh, missed anything or wanted to review what was uh, presented today. Um, so let me get go in, in no certain order. Uh, the questions that I have here. One is says when discussing analogs, how important has the acquisition of Bay Medica been for your analog program? And is that one of the main reasons for acquiring them in the first place? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, our uh, exposure to Bay Medica actually started with a collaboration where they were developing analogs that were uh, specifically gonna be screened in our research for their potential uh, in treating you know, these, these number of different diseases. Uh, that was a big part of why we acquired the company is because we, you know, we saw early on that, uh, you know, their work in um, identifying, building, and filing patents on a number of different uh, cannabinoid analogs was going to be an important component for our pharmaceutical R&D activities. Uh, so, yeah, and, and you know, the patents that they filed uh, cover hundreds, if not potentially thousands of different individual molecules. And so we have quite a treasure trove of um, of analog new chemical entities that we can screen for different diseases. Okay, great, thank you. Um, the next question is, what major pharma companies have been active in the cannabinoid space and what indications are they primarily looking at and does neuroprotection align with them? There's been a number of um, large pharmaceutical companies who've looked at the cannabinoid space over several years. There are a couple of products uh, in the market, one, uh, a couple of THC-based products that are used for different types of pain. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, uh, Jazz Pharmaceuticals has the CBD oil for epilepsy. Those are, to my knowledge, the only ones that are marketed currently. Um, there are other development programs where you know, a cannabinoid may be uh, a part of the portfolio for different companies and in their different um, research. Uh, but no one's really specializing in it the way that we are. Um, you know, there's companies like Zynerva who have a CBD uh, skin patch, um, and they're looking also at um, epilepsy uh, type, type diseases. Um, but, you know, we're the only ones who are kind of inventing new molecules, uh, uh, have the capacity to, to manufacture them and, uh, uh, you know, develop them as pharmaceutical compounds. Thank you. And, and uh, related to the, the press release that you... Um, put out this uh, title, InMed Pharmaceutical Advances Neurogenerative Disease Program with Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, INSERC, Alliance Grant Funding. Can, can you speak a little bit more about the uh, this grant funding, how that works? Is there, you know, to what scope? Where does this take us? How do we mm -hmm. how do you see this um, developing and, and, and creating value for shareholders here? Yeah, I mean, I'll just briefly uh, touch on that. NSERC is a government funding agency, similar, not identical to the NIH in the U.S., uh, where they support early research. Uh, and it's a, it's a grant that actually helps us fund our research activities uh, in collaboration with the University of British Columbia. So we do a lot of our uh, research uh, there um, uh, in, in, a, in a specific lab. And so that just helps fund uh, the program. Um, but we retain all of the commercial rights uh, to the technologies or, or the findings that come out of that. Uh, it's just a, a funding mechanism, you know, for for uh, early stage companies. And, and is there any function where, you know, based on initial research that you can justify further grant funding? How, how is there any way to, to look at it or you know, how would one think about the, the program? And is there sort of a timeline on that? 
research and that collaborative research. Yeah, Eric. Yeah. So, so right now through this grant, uh, we're looking at exploring these analogs in a disease model. But on top of that, you know, one not only when we're looking at how the this, how the molecule is working in treating disease, we need to understand what the mechanism of action for these molecules, what pathway it's been, it, 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 how it's functioned through different pathways. So that's part of what this grant's about. It's studying how the molecules interacting with the endocannab endocrine system in the uh, endocannabinoid system that's that's naturally found in in the body. So so it would address two things. One is the the ther therapeutic side, but also the mechanism of action side for these molecules. Got it. Thank you. Uh, it's pretty exciting and it's and, uh, it's validating, you know, uh, it seems to be validating uh, the the direction you're taking the company and it's very exciting. And um, uh, I think a lot of shareholders are excited about where you might take this. Uh, many of us know uh, too many people that are stricken by Alzheimer's, Huntington's and Parkinson's, very sad, hits way too close to home uh, for yours truly. And, um, you know, I wish that you have complete success in advancing uh, your research here. Uh, the next, switching gears a bit, uh, the, the next question I have here is in regards to your phase two clinical trial in EB, the study should be concluding shortly and re read out expected in early 2023. Uh, what are the plans for this program going forward? Um, good question. So, you know, the plans to advance any drug development program rests with the strength of the data. Uh, and so we don't have any indication of that yet. It's a blinded trial. Um, so the patient, the physician, and the company don't know which treatment site is getting active drug and which treatment site is getting a placebo. Um, so, you know, we, we'll have that data. We'll have the readout at the end of the first quarter, mid to end of first quarter. Um, and we'll just have to see, uh, you know, if the data is strong enough, uh, you know, it may be able to attract uh, some collaborations um, uh, with, with larger companies. Uh, that's always attractive because they certainly have the deeper pockets to continue the research into the more expensive phase three trials. Um, but again, you know, it, it, it completely lies on the strength of the data and kind of what the next steps are going to be. Um, I think in particular, we'd be interested in a collaboration. Uh, just because we have a lot of things in the hopper right now, a lot of development programs, uh, and we'd like to see, you know, all of them uh, be successful. And if that one being the most advanced, it may be the most logical candidate for a some, some type of partnership. Got it. Thank you. Um, you know, the, the, uh, there's a follow-up question in regards to glaucoma. Can, can you review the where you are with that again and just go into uh sort of the market what what is out there today for glaucoma patients what how do we see that we can can you describe that a little bit more a lot of us know um some of the products that are out there but i think in the gen in general uh i think the the tribe would like to understand a little bit more about that uh sure i'll, I'll take the market side of things so there's several uh different class of compounds that are used to decrease the interocular pressure uh, the pressure is caused by the buildup of fluid in the front of the eye. Um, and so the drugs that are out there and available today focus on either uh, enabling or increasing the drainage of that fluid or trying to slow down the production of that fluid. Uh, and that's how you decrease the interocular pressure. Uh, cannabinoids uh, fall squarely into, into that realm uh, in terms of uh, facilitating uh, drainage. Um, and, you know, CBN is not the only one. There's other ones, uh, cannabinoids, that will work as well. Um, not all of them, but, but there are a few. Uh, where we really see the advantage is in this neural protective approach. So independent of whether you drain or, or, or decrease the interocular pressure, uh, if we can help protect the neurons at the back of the eye, then in theory, we should be able to extend the life of those neurons uh, thereby extending the period that people maintain their vision uh, or, or, you know, slow the decline of their vision over time. Uh, that's to us really the interesting area uh, and, and the interesting opportunity in glaucoma. I should point out that we're, uh, you know, investigating other opportunities in the ocular disease space uh, with some of our analogs. Uh, so we think that this effect may be important across a number of different diseases. But again, it's, it's early days um, and, you know, the data is going to help drive 
where we go with uh, with our um, drug development decisions. Eric, is there anything I left off of that? Yeah, so in terms of development, we have done uh, formulation development, having a right formulation in eye drops uh, to deliver the, the product or API in this case uh, to, the, to the back of the eye. That's already done. We have scaled that up. And right now we're waiting to conduct our pivotal talk study. Once that's done, then we could then take the information, combine information and file, uh, file either IND or CPA in different jurisdictions. So, so that's the direction that, and, the, and the place we are with this program. Yeah, the, the toxicology programs, we have to undergo very rigorous and extensive toxicology, uh, preclinical toxicology testing before you go into humans. And that's still to be, to be conducted. Uh, we have met with the FDA in a pre-IND uh, meeting uh, and kind of shared with them our thoughts on the program um, and, you know, have gotten some alignment with them in terms of, you know, what we want to do and whether that would be appropriate for these for this disease state. Uh, so that, that's important as well that, you know, we've had that interaction and we, we have uh, what we think is a solid plan uh, for development of the compound. Okay, thank you. Uh, switching back to um, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, uh, as we all know, there's been a, a significant amount of capital across many different corporations that have been out there in the fight in, in the research uh, to find you know, anything that would help. Uh, can you can you hammer home why uh, why you believe your approach might have successful outcomes in the future and uh, uh, based on what you know today? Yeah, so you know, you know, first of all, we hope everyone is successful. I mean, this is such a devastating area of medicine. Uh, we, you know, we only hope for the best and that, and that a lot of these therapies can come through. What we can say and what we know is that, you know, the, the investigations to date have centered around a couple specific mechanisms, mechanisms of action, uh, which is to reduce beta amyloid plaques uh, and uh, tau proteins. And the results have been mixed. Um, you, there have been demonstrations of being able to remove those plaques or reduce uh, their production, but that has not translated necessarily into an increase in cognitive abilities. Um, so, you know, it's one thing to, to kind of, you know, block that pathway, but if it ends up not meaning anything for the disease or for the patient, then, you know, what have you really accomplished? So what we're doing is taking a completely different approach uh, to these diseases, looking at, you know, the inflammatory effects on the neural pathways, looking at uh, the, you know, potential for, you know, regrowth or growth of the, of the neurons themselves. Um, and we think that this new mechanism of action, this new approach may be something that brings a uh, clear benefit to the patients. But again, you know, we're a long way from showing that, uh, but that's kind of the thesis that we're working on. So it's, it's a whole new different mechanism of action and, and, and pathway disease pathway that we're uh, looking at. That's exciting. Having a novel pro approach, I think, is required here. And I'm excited that you guys are you're on it and it's it's part of your mission now. So um, good luck with that. Um, one question that to circle back, I guess, is uh, the, the, in regards to glaucoma. Uh, one, of, one of the tribe members has actually been uh, treating uh, with dry eye drops for about 20 years, he stated. And um, he's saying, "Will do you believe your solution will require applying drops? And if so, how is it? How will this potentially be better in combination or separately? How how, how are you currently thinking?" Uh, that's a that's a good question. Um, so we are formulating this as an eye drop for a couple of reasons. Uh, the biggest one is that you know, uh, if you take something orally, um, then you have to dose incredibly high amounts in order for even a small amount to get to the side of the disease, in this case, the eye. And the eye is relatively well protected from the rest of the body in terms of, of drug transmission. So uh, by applying directly to the eye, you bypass that, you can, you can deliver a, a minuscule amount and thereby increase the amount that's absorbed in the eye, but also decrease the amount that the rest of the body is exposed to, which may lead to side effects. Um, so that's, that's the general approach. And that's why most people use eye drops to treat eye disease. Um, you know, will we be as good as the existing compounds um, for 
uh, intraocular pressure reduction. It, it remains to be seen, but there's a good chance that we would be. Um, but again, you know, we have this at ad this added effect. So, you know, could there be a pathway to combining our product with existing, you know, low cost eye drops? Uh, absolutely, that that's uh, that's realistic, and you see that you know throughout the advancement of of medicine, where uh, you know rather than a standalone, you put it in combination with something else. So all of those pathways are open to us. Um, again, the data is going to help drive the decisions onto which uh, which pathway we end up eventually taking. Thank, thank you, Eric. Um, switching gears to the cap structure, and I thank you for reviewing the slide. Uh, we have, if I remember right, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's somewhere around in the million million range of shares outstanding, and which would uh, classify you in what many have popularly called a low float stock today, which we've seen a lot of um, trading go on, and 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 uh, InMed stock uh, symbol INM. Um, had traded over 28 million shares yesterday upon your uh, release. And it's been trading up recently after hitting a low. And uh, th there's a lot of folks seem to be very excited about what's going on uh, with this direction of your company. So I commend you on that. Um, do you do you see, uh, can you one confirm exactly what, what is outstanding again? And uh, do you have any other uh, thoughts about uh, you know, in, uh, a direction going forward, or wh why, why do you think uh, this is traded in this manner? Um, good questions. I think you, you probably are better to speak to why it's traded in this manner than I am. Um, but on a, uh, in terms of the outstanding, we're at about 1.5 million if you take into consideration the issued common shares and what we call pre-funded warrants that were part of uh, recent financings. So if you count those together, uh, exclude other common warrants and options, uh, then we're at about 1.5 million thereabouts. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone always wants to know why the stock goes up. Um, but I'm, my bigger question is, why are we so far down? You know, on a, on a consolidated basis, uh, if, if you look at you know, the, the post-consolidation numbers, uh, when, when the consolidation earlier in the year, you know, our 52 week high is, you know, towards $60 and we're trading at $4. So I'm not surprised that we jumped from, you know, whatever it was three to $4 yesterday. I'm shocked why we're still a $4 stock. So, um, yeah, you know, and there's so many macroeconomic issues that are influencing the stock market right now. Uh, and I think we all all seen that across our entire portfolios. And if, if anyone hasn't seen it in a particular stock, please email me because I would I would love to be in stocks that uh, haven't <laughs> haven't uh, experienced uh, this downturn over the last year. So, um, again, I, I'm not you know, I try not to be surprised uh, on the upside or the downside. Uh, I try to and we all try to just come in and execute on our game plan. We think we're doing very interesting things. Uh, we think we have some interesting approaches to treat some very serious diseases. And at the end of the day, that's what we focus on. We, you know, we don't we don't focus on, you know, why the shares uh, are trading up or down. Uh, we just try to focus and stay true to you know our mission and, and execute on our game plan. Thank, thank you. And, uh, and, and lastly, could you just uh, sum up sort of the milestones that you're currently funded through? Uh, in the near term that uh, you, that you're excited about that you laid out in that uh, slide earlier? Yeah, I think the, the biggest kind of short-term milestones are the ones that we talked about, uh, completing the phase two trial and getting a readout there. and That will help inform us as to what the next steps are for that program. Uh, the in vivo analog testing to help us select which compound we'll be moving forward with. Uh, that will be an important milestone. Uh, we have some other ones that we didn't talk about, but... Um, you know, on the uh, consumer side of things, there's an interesting study and we anticipate some data coming out there on a uh, compound called THCV, uh, which uh, has drawn significant interest in the health and wellness space. Um, so, you know, those are gonna be the, the, the important uh, near-term ones. Um, you know, as we, you know, move forward and, and continue to march towards the human clinical trials in glaucoma, there's of course gonna be, uh, Important internal milestones, you know, when, when you invest uh, significant money and, and show that your product is not toxic, that's typically not something that 
investors flock to and say, hey, great, it's not toxic. Uh, but it is an important milestone in the development pathway. And so we'll be, you know, headed towards that as well. So uh, several key things and, um, you know, we'll update people as we achieve those and, and other milestones. Thank you. Thank you, Eric and Eric. Uh, any last words uh, either either gentleman would like to share before I uh, before we sign off? Uh, no, I appreciate everyone participating today. Uh, we're, we're very excited about what we are seeing and where we think we can go with the neurodegenerative uh, disease program. Uh, and it's, you know, it's really kind of a watch this space. Uh, we will, uh, you know, achieve what some important milestones and we'll let you know uh, as we do that. Um, but it's, uh, it's a very, it continues to be a very interesting space. Uh, we think cannabinoids have such a tremendous potential um, across a number of different diseases. And we're only, again, we're, we're only scratching the surface here. We think there's probably a lot more depth of uh, impact uh, that this class of compounds can have. Thank you, thank you. It's fascinating to see this sort of breadth of opportunity and pipeline development that you presented today. Um, I also am excited about one of the points, uh, uh, strategic initiatives that there might be some form using your company, your platform in a way that might be able to uh, grow the company in a way that we haven't, uh, none of us know right now, but uh, that's exciting that you have that potential and that you're thinking that way and how to create value for shareholders. Um, I think uh, we're very excited to, to, to see where this goes, Eric and Eric, and I look forward to having you back on. Tribe, uh, thank you for participating today. Remember, again, these are uh, this is all about our collective interests. So continue to vote, if you will, through the wish list at tribepublic.com, T-R-I-B-E public.com. Note a uh, video of this presentation will be up that you can share with your friends and or go back and view yourself at, at, the, at, the, at YouTube. And uh, they'll be, at, be up there as soon as possible. We'll notify everybody again uh, with the weekly tribe this week that we'll send out uh, tomorrow at uh, 1.15 Pacific. Uh, thanks again for participating uh, and look forward to hearing uh, from you as we move forward. And thank you again, InMed uh, Pharmaceuticals uh, Management Team. Uh, again, remember the symbol is uh, on the NASDAQ is Indigo Nancy Mary, I-N-M. Um, and we look forward to uh, seeing how things uh, develop as you move forward. Thanks again, gentlemen. Have a great rest of the week. Great. Hey, thank you. Thanks, everybody.